group sex. If a man isn't originally attracted to a woman, it doesn't matter how hard she tries, yeah. he'll just never be attracted to her. Yeah. But reformed bastard theory. Three types of men in the world. There's the good guys, there's the bastards, and then the reformed bastards. Mm -hmm. out to dinner with John and Elaine. I could not decide what to wear. Pretty casual, vintage jewelry, silver gold tone earrings. That's gonna match with my watch. It's literally been forever since I've dressed up to go for dinner. All right, we're here. That was fast. Okay, today we're gonna check out Anju, which is Korean food. So cute. A reservation under John Kim. So the last time my audience saw John was in the infamous Seven Days of Sex video. <laughs> so in most relationships, the man wants to have sex more than the woman. Really? <laughs> <laughs> There's this neurotransmitter, a chemical called oxytocin, right. and it's responsible for making you feel empathy and connectedness. Mm -hmm. When you hold your child and skin comes onto skin, then you release oxytocin, and then the mother or the right. father, they feel more connected. So it's, it's a very natural human feeling to desire. Women have lots of this chemical all the time. All the time. So they're walking around and right. you know, they go and pick up their kids from school. They'll see somebody else's mom and say, oh, hey, That's Dana, right. how are you? You know, And then, yeah. and then a guy goes to pick up the kids and they're like, hi, pick up the kids, yes, get yes, the hell out of there. Yes, right? yes, so yes. it's a totally different way of going about life. And the one time that men have the same level of oxytocin as, as women do is when they're orgasming in sex. Men, wow. when they desire sex so much, a lot of women think, oh, he's just being selfish and he just, he's just using he like a pleasure. piece of meat and he, yeah, he wants his own pleasure. But really what men are desiring is the sense of connectedness to their, their, their spouse. I think once women see it that way, then they start to see it a little bit differently. Different. It brings people together right. as opposed to it's a selfish desire. Right, right, yeah. right. I had so many people reach out to me. John put into words the things that I've wanted to tell my husband <laughs> all these years, but couldn't. You're famous. Thanks to you. I came to Singapore in 2006. I came here to join Goldman. So I was a commodities trader and oil trader for them for five years. You came when you were 28. And I'm 43 now. So. Koreans don't age. <laughs> it's a Korean skincare. But I didn't think you were like that much older. Yeah. So he's old. <laughs> <laughs> you're a millennial and he's Gen X. Oh my god. And a colleague of mine knew Elaine. And so we were introduced. She was dating somebody at the time. Were you interested the moment you saw her? Were you like. <laughs> I guess so. I think that's fair to say. I have this theory, you know? I love your theories. Tell me yeah. your theories. Well, like if a man isn't originally attracted to a woman, it doesn't matter how hard she tries, yeah. he'll just never be attracted to her. Yeah. But if a woman is not really attracted to a man, and if the man is persistent, mm -hmm. he can change the woman's mind. Absolutely right. true. There's some actual like evolutionary biology like mm -hmm. you know framework for this. Essentially what you're saying though is that the man's primary attraction to a woman is physical. physical. <laughs> I'm a Christian. My parents are also scientists. Right. I know some Christians don't believe in evolution and all this stuff. I'm just gonna put that out there. But I think it's an interesting framework through which we can understand one way of why we are the way we are, okay? Sure. If you think about evolution, a man's optimal way to reproduce and get his genes proliferated in the next generation is to have sex with many women. We're getting back to sex. We're making another sex video. They don't take a very long time That's right. to inseminate. The cost is very low. Yes, for women, once they get inseminated, the cost is nine months of their exactly. lives, and like you know, it's a very big process. Uh, in general, the characteristics that they're looking for of the right health and age, yeah, and that's why genetically able to bear child. Yeah. Hence, like makeup makes your cheeks redder. It's all or, sexual representations, yeah. right? For women, because it's nine months, they want to find a man to be relatively loyal and stick around and not be a deadbeat and head off. A, a really big risk for them is that when they inseminate uh, a woman, there is no. No risk. What's the risk? Somebody, if they think.
think they did, and somebody oh else God. comes, then they put all this resource in, and actually they're helping somebody else's genes get in the next generation. Actually, there's a point of view there where that came about with the agricultural times. It only happens in family units, where this is my child, that is your child. In a tribal unit, actually, a lot of tribes don't separate whose child it is. It right. is the tribe's children. And actually, if you go even further back, if you look at monkey sex, in okay. this book called Sex at Dawn, it talks about why the most searched porn is group sex. Is what? Group sex. sex. It's very primal. Yes, there's something about watching multiple people have sex that turns people on in general. On top of that, human females make relatively a lot of noise when it comes to sex. And part of the theory is that you're trying to attract other people to come and join it. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Okay. Also, the amount of seminal fluid in uh, human males is a lot more than that of like a gorilla. Actually, you have to fight each other's sperm, which means a woman gets inseminated by multiple men at the same time. That's historically probably the case. Where do you get all this information? That I have not heard before. My evolutionary so biology I'm, classes. I'm so um, sad Donovan is not here. Yeah. We went really deep on the evolutionary <laughs> biology okay. around sex. So. Yes, I think men and women look for different things yeah. in a mate, but that doesn't mean you can't can't overwrite that coding, right? Okay, so her father is really into Korean drama. His favorite actor was, was Song Hye Kyo. Oh my god, I love Song Hye Kyo. Yeah. Song Hye Kyo was dating a guy named Lee Byung Hun. He's, we were friendly, me and Lee Byung Hun. When she told her father, you know, John knows Lee Byung Hun, he basically was like, please marry my daughter. You know, sort of thing. He had heard that I was a dodgy guy, which I was at that time. Really? She said very. I would not have gone out with this guy at all, but he was very persistent. He landed in Singapore and like very quickly he developed like a bad reputation so I walked into poker and I had a Bible on Sunday. She said, why do you have a Bible? And I said, I go to church. She's like, you go to church? I like, yeah, I go to church. I sing in the choir. She's like, you sing in the choir? I started to change the image a little bit. So how do you reconcile that? You know, this like whole like bad boy image. Okay. I have a bad Love boy theories. theory. Uh, if you have a bad boy theory, I can usually add to it. Okay, fantastic. He calls it the reformed bastard theory. Three types of men in the world. They're the good guys, they're the bastards, and then they're the reformed bastards. Mm -hmm. If you marry a nice guy, mm -hmm. then they're nice and they're fantastic. But then the thing is, they haven't got point. the thing out of the yeah. system. Yeah, that's Donovan. Hey, really? Donovan's Nice guy. He looks like a bad boy to me. It's like he had a bad boy face to me. No, he never had. I mean, his cool I, haircut. I met, we've been together since we were 18. We are each other's first boyfriend and girlfriend. You know how insane that is? But he's so he's cool. 18. In high school, I'm sure he had. No, you know. oh my god. Can I show you guys pictures? <laughs> but he, well, he, he is the nice guy. So I feel like maybe when he's in his 40s, he might hit a phase where he's like, oh shit, I've never <laughs> done anything crazy. He needs like a bad girl. He yeah. Yeah. Bad. I'm not worried about Donovan <laughs> at all. If you get a reformed bastard, yeah. then he's had his no, fun. I agree. I I grew up in a town that was all white. It was all mm. Irish and Italian. And I got bullied as a kid. And a lot of Asian Americans, like, they had this chip on their shoulder because yeah. they were an outsider. Yeah. Yeah. I was suicidal, actually, by the age of 10, clinically depressed. At the age of 13, I started to rebel. Three things that I blamed. One was my parents. How could they have done this to me? You know, they came over and they were such outsiders to my culture. And like, so, why am I not Irish? Yeah, and I'm freaking Korean. And like, three was my faith because we went to a Korean church, that was a Protestant church that was 30 minutes away. In the States, if you rebel as a kid, then you get more accepted and respected yeah, by your friends, yeah. not if you're good at school or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I was like, hey, this is really easy. So I, I kind of like doubled down on that strategy. I went all in on it and I got really deep into a lot of bad stuff, a lot of partying, a lot of drugs. I just got arrested a couple times. For the next 10, 11 years of my life, I basically went very far from my roots. I just yeah. went and sought everything that I'd looked for my entire life, which is affirmation and acceptance and respect from the world. The biggest show that we played was at the Electric Factory. It's like 2000, 3000 seat. And so when you have people, like a bunch of people sitting there cheering for you, it does something for that sense of like acceptance. I minored in psychology in school. We think we're searching for like money, relational happiness, or the intermediate thing that you're searching for. You get a little squirt of dopamine in your brain. It makes you feel good. So if you yearn after that thing, in order to get that same dose the next time, you need more of the thing. Yeah. I realize you're just on this treadmill and after every high, whether it was drugs, whether it was sex, I would feel this incredible low yeah. and I would need more of the same thing. Yeah. Just how meaningless is that? Yeah. There was one show in particular, I was looking out at the crowd and I heard a voice say, come home. And I looked around and I realized nobody else had heard it. So I thought that was very strange. I realized in that context what home meant was a state of mind, my family, my culture, and my faith. And so at that point I realized what I needed to do was actually to move to Korea, to live with my parents and to reconcile with them, to start engaging with my faith again. Looking back, I think that was the voice of God. Other people might say you were just hallucinating because you were tripping on acid or some, you know, some, something. I don't know. But I gotta say, I mean, it started with we literally went to everything, right? You know, cocaine, heroin, uh, opium, crystal meth. Like. By the way, can any of this 
go on? I think this is okay. I talk about this in public. Is this how you got into Golden? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Later when I got to Goldman, that was when I was 28. Where did you go to college? UPenn. My boss actually said to me, there are a lot of people whose resume I looked at, but the reason you st stood out is that as a trader, I'm always for looking for people who have a risk appetite. Yeah. That is actually good career advice for you wannabe traders out there. Every resume that comes in the door, mm -hmm. they're like academically capable enough, mm -hmm. right? A risk appetite is really hard to sort of test for. But I saw in your resume, you actually left a Fortune 500 company. I was with Merck for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you left the safety of that to go be a full-time musician. Yeah. My other boss said to me, I can't tell when you're making or when you're losing money. So you'll have days where you're making, you know, millions of dollars and you'll have days where you're losing millions of dollars and I cannot tell. Do you still do to. use that in your day-to-day -day nowadays? Yes, absolutely. So with venture capital, the burn time is a lot longer. So it's much longer cycles. Yeah. But there are still lots of ups and lots of downs, and to be able to be even keeled through it all. But I think I get a lot more of that now for my faith, actually. When you believe in something that is just much bigger than yourself, you can take the perspective of, in the scheme of eternity, this is a very, very small thing. Yeah. He read this book called The Second Mountain, a conservative columnist with the New York, New York okay. Times. He was enjoying such success in his career as a uh, journalist. He had achieved the pinnacle of what he thought he was looking for. He was like, oh, is that it? We all climbed this first mountain, which is, you know, like, well, career success, whatever. There's this whole other second mountain, which is like sort of like the moral, spiritual mountain to either religion, God, community, or it's about giving mm, to yeah, others. Absolutely. I think it relates really closely to what yeah. you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. I engaged a, an advisor slash kind of coach. His name is Dave Gibbons. He helped me realize I've always been sort of, a, he calls it an and person. Like I'm Korean and American into like technology and businesses. I like to look at the intersection between faith and work. Yet I'm told by the world so often like there's a 10,000 hour rule like only yeah. for me the way I'm designed is that I'm an end person I love sitting at the intersection of things you thrive best when you're right in yes. that middle yeah I've been in venture now for seven eight years mm -hmm. It's not like I've arrived, but I kind of am squarely like, okay, I'm a venture capitalist now. I'm not in between anymore. Yeah. I'm not fighting from outsider to insider anymore. Yeah. And so I'm not able yeah. to relive that childhood pain uh, oh, and the overcoming of the pain. Yeah. And so this was something that, that Dave wow. helped me to identify. And he said, look, you don't need to always be going from one thing to another, but you just need to construct ways that you can get that in betweenness. Jonathan's like very conservative. What? Really? when it comes to phone sex, virtual sex, or anything like that, right? Part of him's always like, I don't want to get hacked. Like, I don't want the stuff leaking on the internet, whatever. Have you guys ever done virtual sex? Really? <laughs> I guess oh, we're pretty okay. conservative too. Okay, yeah, you guys are pretty conservative too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally he called me up one day, he's like, dude, I can't do this anymore. Like, <laughs> I need to. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, we gotta do this. I'm like... Crazy man. <laughs> gonna be more of that in your future? But he's gonna be home on Friday. He's coming back on Friday, actually. Yeah! We're gonna hang out. It'll be good. We're not opposed to trying, I think, right? No? Okay, Elaine's looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> they have to clear the drinks. I have to clear... Oh! Actually, I really identify with everything you said about being used to being the outsider and, mm. and being the in-between. Mm. Like that was also my history, right? Mm. Having moved around in many places. Like I wasn't bullied, but mm. I certainly wasn't popular mm. growing up. <laughs> Which is why I call myself Cool Mom's Diet. Clearly I was never cool. Mm, okay. <laughs> Anybody with the name cool, self-proclaimed cool is like clearly not it. I work best going from that zero to 10. Mm. That 10 to 100, I mm. find it very hard to keep pushing in that direction. Right, right. I guess almost every career I've done, you know, like banking, I wasn't in it for very long. Mm. But I did my own design company in New York. But basically every time I would completely throw myself into something and yeah. I would grow it from nothing to yeah. having traction. Mm -hmm. And then the moment I had traction, you know this idea works. Yeah. And taking that to like the next- Scaling next, it. To scaling the, it, yeah. like I get lost somewhere there. Mm. Yeah. In relationships as well. Dude, I've been with the same guy for 16 years. Yeah, like we've been So that's why having fun sex. <laughs> gotta keep it real, you know, gotta keep it fresh. I know that growing up, a lot of people disliked me because I was always too, kind of too in your face. So I've never been a like, low profile person. Too da zhao feng. Yeah, yeah, she's da zhao feng. Oh, let's go. Oh. Like you don't want to be that guy who... Yeah, you don't want to be the person that sticks free. out. Yeah, I've yeah. always been the person that sticks out. I was telling my mom about this, you know, I was like, how do I not stick out so that I don't piss off so many people? And my mom was just like, at some point, you just got to recognize that's who you are. Mm. You have found a profession that realizes that, yeah, right? Absolutely. My mom is a soloist, she was a violinist. Mm. She's always been the star of every show, right? I'm sure a lot of people hated her. She's like, I'm not going to tone myself down just so that, you know, 
know, some people that hate me less. Well, you've clearly gone from zero to something. Yeah. Do you feel like this is the thing you can keep from 100 to 10,000 to a million to whatever? Because yeah. do you feel like you can kind of do this forever? Or This would be my vocation. Yeah, like, the calling, I, right? Yeah, yeah. what okay, I could do for life. Yeah, because totally. previously I always felt like there's not a single thing that utilizes everything. Yes, yes. Design is just one aspect. Mm -hmm. Music is just one aspect, yeah. right? Yeah. Video creation is like, you're designing how your audience is going to feel at every yeah. second, yeah. which I think, you know, is, is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah.